Hey, it's Heidi from A Lively Hope, and today I'm going to show you three different tiny embroidery patterns to make bookmarks, like this one. So, to start off, you'll need a metal bookmark like this. Um, when you get these, they often come with this glass piece that goes in it, and I really just hate how they turn out when you use that. So I replace my kits with this metal piece and a penny actually is even the perfect size for that. So this is what we will be wrapping the embroidery around to put into our bookmark. So I'm going to work all three on this fabric. So I'm going to start off by tracing my piece lightly with pencil in three different places. So I have a guide for how big my embroideries need to be. Make sure that you leave plenty of room to cut around the pieces because we'll need that to wrap it around the back. Um, you can use a pencil lightly. This is actually a little dark so I'm going to erase it a bit. Um, or you could use a water-soluble pen. So, I'm going to do lavender, poppies, and roses today. So to start off, I'm just going to draw kind of a U-shape that spans the whole area that we have. And then I'm going to add one in the middle and then a smaller U-shape. So this is the base of our lavender plant. All these points come together down here. So we will do this in green and then add the lavender blossoms to that on top. And I like to go all the way with the green to the end of these lines, which you'll see. Um, and then add the blossoms on top. It just gives it a little more depth and you can see the green branches peeking through. Okay, next will be a similar design to these poppies. I'm going to do one, two poppy flowers here. And then one, so that's a continuation of that poppy. And then these are the lighter stems. So this will be a flower and this will be a flower. And then the final one is roses. I'm going to draw three circles, one, two, three. These will turn into wagon wheel stitch. And then I'm also going to have a couple of stems that poke out the sides. So when we start stitching these, you will need a surprisingly small amount of thread. I often just pull from my thread jar, my extra from other projects. Um, so you really don't need a ton for these teeny projects. So I'm gonna start with this kind of brightish green for the stems of the lavender. Here's a little trick for separating the strands out. I'm going to be working with two strands, so if you run your finger through, keeping it taut, you can separate it pretty easily. I'll just set that aside. And then here's my needle. I'm going to thread that and then tie a knot in the end. 
So now I'll tie a knot in the end. This is a trick my grandma taught me. Wrap it around your fingers, just your pointer finger, and then rub it together as you pull. And that forms a nice little knot there. So I'm going to start at the top of this farthest branch stem doing split stitch. So I'll do a tiny, I came up from the bottom, and then do a tiny stitch forward. And then now I'll work back. So I come up ahead of where my stitch is. So there's that space about the size of a stitch. And then go back in the middle of your previous stitch, just right through the threads. I'll do that again. So I'm following directly on top of the pencil line that I made before, but you don't necessarily have to. If you need to adjust, that's just fine. So because this is so tiny, it doesn't take long to finish each little piece. And I prefer the look of starting at each end, farthest away and then coming down, rather than continuing on here to this piece. So I'm just going to skip right to the top of this next piece, this next branch, and do the next one. It will leave a little thread along the back, but because it's so small, it doesn't really affect much. It's not like you're stretching it clear across here or something. It's a very small area. So I will continue like that until all of these branches are stitched. So I'm now going to move on and show you the branches on this other one. I'm just going to leave this dangling and hope it doesn't get tangled. So I'm choosing this darker green to work some stems on the poppies. So again, I'll separate it into two, st two strands out of the six. And then thread the needle. I am old-fashioned and use spit sometimes. Okay, and again we'll tie the knot. So for these that don't have flowers on them, we're going to use fly stitch. So again I come up from the bottom. I'm going to do just a tiny stitch to start and then we're going to make kind of a V shape with our stitch. So you're going to come out to the side. And I will often hold this with my thumb while I go back on the opposite side. And then you're going to come up right where that first stitch is. And pull it to form a V, and then you're going to tack that down with just a tiny stitch right over the top of that V shape. 
And then I usually do kind of a back stitch in between to separate it from the next V stitch. Sorry. So up on one side, down on the other side of your stem. Pulling your V. Actually, I think I lied that first time. I do just make this longer. The stitch that tacks it down, I make it longer rather than doing two separate stitches. Okay, so that is one. Done. I'll do another one here. I'm going to just finish off this. That's good. And then for these roses, the same thing actually. I'll, I'm going to do one tiny, oops, forgot to tie a knot. Just the tiniest little leaf of fly stitch that will poke out once the other flowers on this are done. I'm going to kind of curve it so it looks like it's poking out of a bouquet or something. And then just leave that like that because this will all be covered with French knots when we finish this. So the next thing I'll show you is the roses. I'm going to use three strands of this color, so I separate them on one end, hold it taut, and then pull my finger through, kind of twisting as I go so they don't tangle. And tie the knot. So this, you could call it rose stitch or uh, wagon wheel stitch. So you can see the flower, or this circle shape that I've lightly drawn on there. We're going to start at the top and make a stitch right into the center of that circle. And then do one halfway around. So that's like 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Now we're going to go 5 o'clock. We want to have an odd number to make this work right. We'll be weaving. So now that's 5 o'clock. We'll do seven o'clock. Oops. Just pull that not in, uh, not apart. And 
and each of these you're starting around the outside of the circle and adding the stitch into the same spot in the middle. And then finally, nine o'clock. So you should have five stitches. Oh, I'm struggling with knots today. Five stitches going all the way around. Kind of looks like a star. And you can see mine is not perfectly spaced. That's just fine. So I'm gonna come up next to one of these stitches and then all the rest of this is worked on top. So I'm gonna go over this stitch, under, over, under, over, under, and just keep going and building my rows around that. So over that stitch, under, and you wanna pull it not too tight and not too loose. So that one was under, now I'm going over and under. Over, and then this is back to the stitch we started with. The first time we went over, and now we're going under that one. Which is why we need an odd number. So I'll just keep building over, under, over, I do twist my piece as I go. Just adjusting that when I pulled it too tight. And you're gonna get to the point where you can no longer see those base stitches that we did. And, and you've got this nice 3D flower. So then I'm gonna go under. So I'm going over this last little one and under completely through the fabric to finish it off. So then I would knot that or because I'm gonna do these other two flowers that same color, I'll just leave the thread there. So I'm going to go work to that point on all these, and then I'll come back with the next bit of instructions. Okay, so I have finished the wagon wheels. I did the fly stitch, these three areas, and then I did split stitch again here for the poppy stems. The exact same thing that I did here. So now we're going to come in and add the flowers. So on the lavender, I'm going to skip some space, maybe not quite that much, come up from the bottom, and I'm going to do French knots. French knots are kind of notorious for being tricky. They take a little practice. I'll show you here. So I like to hold the thread an inch or two away from the fabric and wrap it with one hand around the needle and then hold it with my other finger while I put it in very close to but not exactly where I came up. If you put it in the exact same place you'll just pull the stitch right through and then you can see I'm holding it with my other thumb as I pull this through to keep the tension and that will give you a lovely little French knot. So I'm going to add several of these in this light purple color and then fill in holes with this darker purple. And the reason I do that is because it makes it look much more realistic if there's more than one Color. So this does take practice, but I'm going to go through and on every stem add several French knots, 
some of them overlapping the stem, some off to the side. Just attempting to make this look like lavender and to fill up the space here. Okay, so again, I'll go over the whole thing with the light purple and then fill in holes with the dark purple, and that one will essentially be done. Next, we're going to do the poppies. So again, I have separated two strands of this kind of orangish color. Oops, missed one. Tie a knot in the end. And then on the end of this stem and the end of this stem, I'm going to add the flowers. So I'm going to start with the middle of the flower and work back to the stem. And then slowly come out to the side on either end, on either side, kind of forming what would look like the side of a poppy. Like the poppy is facing the sky. And you can see that as I'm working, I'm going back to very close to the same entry point for each stitch over and over again, while these are getting wider apart. And that is what is giving us the shape of our flower. My petals are not all in a line. I mean, it's kind of making a bumpy edge, which I like. And I feel like it makes it look more realistic. Okay, so there's that one. I'm gonna do one more right here. And I will use that same technique to do a stitch or a flower here. And the next step for these roses is to add a French knot right in the center of each of them. I'm doing yellow. I really love the difference this makes. Just this tiny detail makes it look so much better, I think. So I'll add one to each of those. And then I'm also going to do some French knots to fill in around this bouquet of roses. Lots of French knots in this set. Okay, so that's those done. And then I'm going to use this kind of pink, pinky orange coral color to do some French knots all in around here. So I will come back with those done and the lavender done. All right, so there's the lavender, the French knots on the roses, and the poppies. If you wanted to, you could add in more flowers, or I mean leaves here. I'm just gonna leave it like it is. I think that's really sweet. So the next step is kind of the scariest at least for me, because I have messed it up a few times. So now we cut this out so that we can put it in our bookmark frame. So generally, I use 
this piece that we'll be wrapping the piece around. I like to hold it on there just to remind myself to, to give me extra room. So I'm going to kind of center the piece in there and hold it in place as I go around and I'm going to give myself quite a lot of excess around the outside. And as I turn it, I'm going to reset. So we're just cutting a circle all the way around like that. Ended up being a little long. Okay, so now I'm going to take my needle, which I have misplaced somehow. There it is. And I, I'm going to start forming the How this is going to look. So turn it around and going from the bottom I'm going to go around the outside of this. There's no knot in the end. I'm just going to do kind of a running stitch making sure that I'm not so close to the edge that it pulls the threads apart. And as I go I'm going to kind of hold this end to keep it from pulling through. So we're just doing running stitch all the way around. Turning your piece as you go. Make sure all the threads from the flowers are inside where the metal piece is going to go. And when you get back around, you need to make sure that you've got long tails on both sides. You can adjust that somewhat, but I like to try not to mess with it as much as possible. So we've got our piece here with the running stitch all around. I'm going to kind of n knot it, not a full knot, but so that I can pull on it and cinch it up. And I usually put my thumb in there to kind of guide so that this starts forming a kind of a bowl. And then I put the metal piece in and it's a circle so it doesn't really matter like there's no right or wrong way but then you tighten it up the rest of the way and at this point I will flip it over and kind of adjust I like to have my pieces weighted down a little more toward the bottom like that if you wanted it more centered you could totally do that so I'm pulling quite tight. And now I'm just going to set it down. Still maintaining that tension. And complete that knot. So we want to have the tension pretty taut there. You could triple knot it as needed. 
And then I'm going to cut off the excess thread back here. And using super glue or something equivalent, E6000, I will place, so I'll put some glue in here and then place this in and I will hold it very firmly while it sets in place. So it'll be like that. And then the very last touch is to add some fabric water shield. So you're just going to do a very light spray. I'm not going to do it on camera, but a very light spray over the top to kind of protect your work. So then I have these two other pieces that I will finish in the same way and they'll look a little something like these two. So that's your finished bookmarks.